Ikamu. This is the year 2000 election. He, he believed he won the, 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 the parliamentary, parliamentary election. election to Rebecca Adoti of the NDC. The matter went to court and he was vindicated. But by the time he was vindicated by the courts, he, didn't, he had less than six months to enjoy his MP ship. So what the MPP did was to repeat him in 2004 and he won the election. So there's a certain sense, which is why sometimes in Ghana, when somebody dies, their spouse, so for example, if you go to Shai Osudoku, Oklu's wife is now the MP. You can say the same for Mansi Fancy Man East. Mm -hmm. So I, I think NDC is doing first a political calculation before a legal calculation. Because as we stand, legally he's qualified. Yes. You can't make a choice of a candidate on the basis of whether the Attorney General would intend to proceed to court or not. That's too far. Do you get me? So, I think... And even the, if the Attorney General proceeds... How long would the case take? We don't know. would he even win? Yes, because now the guy is duly qualified. Yes. And we don't know whether... And don't forget, the NDC's defense during this whole case was that at the time he filed, he believed that the process was just administrative. So, it, the, the, the point is that now it's about who stands, which is why MPP as well doesn't want to impose a candidate. Because the guy who lost is still alive. Mm -hmm. But I feel they think, look, let's not just look at this as a 2023 election. Yes. So let's wait for, let's wait, let's choose the person that actually represents the people. Because whoever wins this election will have another election in a few months' time. So let's, let's do the right thing. Okay. Now, a quick correction. I'm told that there's already a criminal case ongoing. Yes, there's, there's, so the state has already brought charges against the Chief So yeah. that's what I'm looking at. But you see, the fact that you're standing trial does not mean you cannot run for election. Yeah. You can run for election. You can win the election. You may be in parliament for two terms. The court process will not be over. And then you may possibly lose a general election and go home. You can ask Domelovo. He will explain to you. He's been yeah. in retirement for yeah. two years before yeah. he was told that his leave was unconstitutional. So it is possible that the case may be continuing while he's also serving in parliament. That's if he's elected. The two things that may come up, can he win that court case against him? And I'm referring to the criminal one against him. Can he not? If he wins, then it means he continues to serve as a member of parliament. If he does not, then he becomes a convict. And you but that's even if he wins the election. That's if he wins the and election. And the other question is, will the electorate risk wanting to vote for somebody who may have court cases? So there are many calculations. Mm -hmm. So I think the NBC will say sympathy and people feeling they want vindication. The MPP will say... This guy is encumbered. He has too much baggage. Get a fresh guy. Get representation. Right? So that's... And also, the issues around 2024 considerations. Okay? So you want a candidate who, even if they win, will have the same level of momentum to then represent whichever party wins into the main election, which is less than a year and a half away. So all of those calculations are ongoing. So the NDC is playing the Uhuru Kenyatta William Ruto campaign, where in 2016, they were standing trial at the ICC. They still went to the polls, got elected, and as soon as they won, the charges were dropped, even though they were not related to the election necessarily. And the NDC insists that this is a guy that the people want, so we give that person back to the people. I interviewed uh, Mustafa Gbande. He's a deputy general secretary of the party in charge of operations. It is determined. They are not even going to open the polls up yeah. there. They are, they are simply going to go, is James Jachikwesin or nobody, and that is their plan. But let's look at by-elections. We saw what happened in Kumewu, allegations of vote buying from the NDC. And these votes are not being bought only by, with money, according to the NDC. Rules were being constructed. Our correspondent, Hafiz, was there. He told us how the residents were not happy. They said that nothing was happening, and a by-election is impending, and then they have seen these roads happening. On City Prime News, like you said, they are doing roads in that area. It is a problem, isn't it, for our national development? Well, look, we know that these things happen. This is not the first time, and we can't pretend that these things don't happen. Even in Teshin, there was a demonstration about roads, and even though there's no by-election there, the mere intention of a demonstration, we heard that the roads, they started fixing the roads. So the truth is that the, 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 the government has limited resources, and they will use it for their political advantage. So... It's, it's, a, it's a big problem for our, our politics. I'm sure if I'm from Asin North, I'll say, well, we have a by-election, so let's fix the roads as well. But some of the people who were interviewed felt like the government was taking them for a ride because why would you wait for a by-election to give us the road or whatever you're doing? Be that as it may, I think that this election will give us a proper sense, a more accurate sense of 2024 than Kumewu would because of because where it is. Because of all the issues, mm -hmm. because of where it is. It's in the central region. 
Don't forget there are four swing regions out of the ten. So if you go to electoral map, BA, Greater Accra, Central, and then Western when it was together. Now it's been split. But Central is still a swing region, as is Greater Accra. If you take the BA regions now, it's been split so it's very clear. Ahafo and Bono MPP, Bono East NDC. Prior to that, it was a mix. Okay. If you take Western as well, Western North is NDC, Western is MPP. Because when you disaggregate, that's what you see. So I think the two main swing regions left. Central and Greater Accra. Central and Greater Accra. Don't forget, the NDC made some changes in their parliamentary leadership. Somebody from the central region is now the leader of the mi minority group. Mm -hmm. Their running mate has always been from the central region. It's always been a prize up for grabs. So this election is a better reflection of what to expect. But as we say in politics, a week is a long time. Trust me, 27th June, there's so many dynamics that can change between now and then, not to even talk about 2024. So we don't have to overexert ourselves. Mm -hmm. There's more action coming. So Reverend Tim Fodjo, Asin South, Kennedy Japan, Asin Central, I'm sure they're going to descend on Asin North, hoping that they would add that to the win of the N N NPP. Well, it's funny because the NPP's nomination process itself, it coincides with this. The open nominations, I think it was 24th May, and it will go on for a month. So the nomination period for flag bearer ends a few days before the by-election. Yes. They have a major first round election in August, August, right? And that's probably a month after this by-election. Mm -hmm. So we don't even know how this will play out in the MPP race, whether Kennedy will go there to support, whether he will use this as a way of saying, we don't know. So the, it's all up in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the crucial See, that seat is necessary in Parliament for an important reason. If NDC wins that seat, Parliament remains a hung one. If NDC loses it, that issue of hung Parliament now ceases. NVP would have a majority, even though it will not be a huge majority, but at least they have a comfortable majority that they can be working with. So anything that comes out of 27 June is very critical, not just for the local election, not for the main election, but for the Chamber of Parliament. And, you know, because Kumeu was largely peaceful, police were commended by the opposition, everybody thought the only problem was the so-called vote buying. I really hope it's a new trend, because by-elections have been violent. And Kumeu was not. So the stakes are much higher in Asin North. So the agencies must be more careful to ensure that it doesn't degenerate into violence. Because, as you said, this, everything hangs on this. All right. So I feel like Kumeu may not be a very good measure of what to expect. And we need to track the language of the politicians as they campaign in Asin North to get a sense of what signals to expect on the day. The NPP party talk about their, their flag bearership race coming up, candidates are busy campaigning, and that's what we're going to go to next. Uh, would they have time to go to Asin North? You reckon they will be busy doing their rounds, and so the election may not be as popular like Kumeu was. Kumeu was a free place. Everybody could go and campaign. We saw a huge I actually think ground. that I actually think that the presidential candidates will try and use Asin North to gain advantage and recognition. I actually think so because they would want to, to be seen campaigning for the party. I think the party will unite around whoever is chosen. I think they are, they are wise enough to do that. And I think that they will try and use it as a springboard to give hope to their people that 24, 24 is winnable because most of the polls are saying they're going to lose 2024. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this is going to be a real platform for even jostling. So you should see a lot of the... Uh, candidates campaign for the candidate of the party for the parliamentary. Mm -hmm. They may even put aside their own campaigns. Yeah, and do that. They, would, they would like to be seen holding his hand to say, this is the guy, vote for him, so that if he wins, they can get some of the benefits. But the guy himself, whoever is going to be elected by or the, the lady. Yeah, uh, there are two guys. Okay, so the guy. Are, <laughs> whoever is elected has to be careful because, okay, who do you want to endorse you in this election? That's oh, critical. I don't think that's an issue because every, I think the political parties are very savvy. They need to show, I, I don't think that he will have a problem 
if Baumia lifts his hands, Alan lifts his hand, Kwame Japan lifts his hand, Kenny lifts his hand. Because MPP wants to show their MPP. Mm -hmm. So that's not an issue here. Okay. Okay. That's not going to be an issue here. So he, he should just enjoy. I mean, this is his best chance. Plenty of fish in the soup that, is not this bad. Is, this is not going to be an issue at all. This is a situ uh, situation room on City TV. My name is Umaru Sandam. I'm here with Bernard Avle. We're just talking about Asin North. It's a by election that will be coming up later uh, this month. We have an eye on that. It's a very crucial uh, seat. It's been necessitated by the Supreme Court's pronouncement on James Jachi Quisin. When we come back, at the national level, the MPP headquarters has been a busy place. Various people uh, have been going there to pick up nomination forms uh, for the persons that they want to be the leader of the MPP ahead of the election. One person, at least we are told, has gone in person. When we come back, we'll talk about who went to do what. The neighborhood i'm having my toys the very reason why i took it for us see the price is very good and it's spacious to contain all of us alphabet city now i'm a landlord i don't pay rent and my airbnb business is booming to me pay me name bank and i'm in the city and i say alphabet city the pension pay me 20 percent the payment plan i want to show my man to say and you're very smooth this is a healthy place to raise our families and create in peace. Come on, be my neighbor. Alphabet City, the ABC of home sweet home. Alphabet City is a classy and peaceful gated community in Sakumono. We have 24-7 top-notch security and high-quality access roads. We have three bedrooms and two washrooms. Three bedrooms and three washrooms with boys' quarters. We have three bedrooms and four washrooms. We have two bedrooms and two washrooms, all with beautiful kitchens and kitchenettes. Call Alphabet City on 0240-111119 or 050-44-99999. Alphabet City, the ABC of Home Sweet Home. Day 5 of the Heritage Caravan began with a southernward trip to the Savannah region. We got to the capital, Damogo, and traversing through interesting historical locations along the way, eventually the Mali National Park. After a detailed briefing by our tour guide, the caravanites were in high anticipation of seeing wildlife at the park and maybe even a rare sighting. Watch part one of the Heritage Caravan Diaries, day five, every weekday, only on City TV. The Voice Factory Season 5 is on, and this has been the journey so far. The excitement! What is the best way to pray? Mm -hmm. What shall I say now? I swear. Look, I'll give you a standing ovation. You are oh, no, 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 Tired of living life in a merry go round, and you can find a fighter, but I see in you, so we gon' walk it out. Oh, 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 this your love is sweeter than honey. Anything you do, do it for me. If this town is an apple, then let me take a bite. If they say why, why, tell them that this human nature, why, why, does it be that way? Sad man story. Ah, uh, Gina, me. Ah, uh, we are see my way, I know get nothing. 
Now we have our top 10 finalists. Get ready for the live shows. On the 10th of June 2023, the magic of the Voice Factory Season 5 begins only on City TV. The Voice Factory Season 5 is sponsored by Ebony Condoms. Every day and I will pull up on top. That be why hustle and be my anthem. Me want make money, make my mommy proud. She will give me pep, give me more of them. This is the Situation Room on City TV. I'm Umaru Sandamad here with Bernard Avle. We are doing in-depth analysis of the new patriotic parties' internal elections for you. Uh, we're going to walk you through some of the candidates that have gone to pick forms uh, from the party's head, head office and the key issues that are coming up in the party's race uh, to 2024, the internal elections to be dealt with first before we go into the national general elections. Bernard, there's a man looking at you. He's behind yeah. you. He was on point blank on Eyewitness News two days ago. But before we went on air, he took issue with me and you. Is it? He said we did situation room where we analyzed everybody who is running. Yeah. And we didn't put him on. We didn't talk about so him. So today is his day. So he didn't even mention his photo. And I said, it's because nobody knew. He I said, didn't no. know. I didn't he said, know. He said he was known. I said, well, we didn't know you. The other person we knew is a lecturer at the UEW. We didn't know you were running. He said, oh, but he's all over the place. He's campaigning. I said, we didn't know you. We so were today saying. he's here. So today he's here. His, name, his name is Kojo Safwa. Kojo Koko. Nsafwa Koko. Nsafwa being the key. Yeah, he has the key to the uh -huh. future. So I asked him, when did you join the MPP? When did you get a, a, a party ticket, a party card? He said 2012. That was when he got a party card. Ah, okay. um, but how long or how far back have you been in the MPP? He said since the year 2000. Okay. What did you do? He said he was busy with the general campaigns of 2000. Okay. And that he worked with, guess who? Ogede. Akubo. He says he was Hawa Yakubu's. Into the energy world. And has so he's an energy consultant. That's what he said. And he said that he doesn't want to be matched up with anybody else. But he is very certain yeah. that he will be number one of the la first five well, on, on, in August? It's good. Well, two things uh, that separate him from the others. He picked up the form himself, which was good. So mm -hmm. he went, he picked the form, and he spoke to the media. That's number one. Number two, he's the youngest. All right? So if voters were looking for a fresh face to say, look, we are tired of all these guys. We want to just vote for somebody else. <laughs> You know, and he also said something. He said energy issues are about six percent of all our problems, yeah. and he believes that his expertise in energy will help save the day. I thought he's quite eloquent. Speaks really well. He is. I don't know his end game. Um, there are different ways of becoming prominent in political parties. I asked him that question. I said, you're just trying to become popular, isn't it? He said, no, I have been on all manner of TV stations. I was on TV3 ahead of election 2012 doing campaigns for Nana Kufado. So people know me on TV already. Mm -hmm. I'm not coming here to market myself. I'm here to win, and I'm going to be first out of the first five. I'm like, all right, that's very ambitious. Well, but let's be honest. The first time a Nemo ran, of course, he was an MP. Mm -hmm. Nobody gave him a dog stance. That's true. He got into the top five. So, look, we don't know the mood of the people in the party. So, you, I mean, you can listen to him mm -hmm. when he spoke. I, I thought he spoke really well. He was quite clear in what he said. Um, we are in a, a, a country which is in a difficult situation economically. And we also have despondency around the two leading political parties. So why not? So let's see what Kojo Poku told people or journalists when he picked the forms. In momentum as aspirants step forward to pick up their nominations. Since the opening of nominations on May 26, a total of seven hopefuls have obtained their nomination forms. Notable figures such as former Energy Minister Boachie Jaku, former General Secretary of the Party Kobne Japong, Francis Adainimo, former Trades and Industry Minister Dr. Kofi Kunedu Apreku, immediate past Agriculture Minister Dr. Owusefri Yakoto and Kojopoku have all expressed their intentions by securing the 50,000 cities nomination forms. 
The latest entrant to secure their nomination is Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Former Vice Chairman of the party, Fred Owari, and former National Organizer, Samir Uku, visited the party headquarters on... Because they understand the gravitas that I have when it comes to energy. Today, energy is 60% of our national problems. Upstream, downstream, when we increase electricity, there's a problem. When petroleum prices go up, there's a problem. So you need somebody who can what? Have control of this problem and bring it down. Then there are other issues of youth unemployment. There are other issues of what I want to do. So does it mean that for every report? All those things at the right time. They will be playing but the full no, Clearly, household. everybody understands that. Kujupoku, who is the most so they have other interviews. Form, okay. And the youthful person Singing who interviews. Okay, party okay. has all the solutions. Let's move quickly to the the NPP has scheduled the presidential polls for November and the Let's party go. has urged all aspirants to conduct a clean campaign. Evans Nimako, the director of elections, shared. So that's Kojun Safuapoku. Uh, he says he's going to be first of the top five in August when the NPP goes to the polls. He believes himself so well. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit surprised that no, he's so You know, confident. for me, I think, look. I, I don't think you should be surprised. No, no, I'm surprised. Look, you had in the NDC, mm -hmm. there was a time they were running for election. There was you a guy Professor called... Alabi. No, not that. There was a guy called Eli something. Uh -huh, um, Eli yes. Agbe Mava or yes, something. Yes, he yes. ran. Yes. Look, these things are normal. It's a democratic space. There are different strategies. So we should encourage people to run. We should encourage people to throw their hats in the ring. We shouldn't make elections only about legacy inheritances for old people. Right? So, I, I mean... Look, if we knew he was running, we would have profiled him. So there you have him, energy uh, guy. He will struck and be questioned. Does he understand the issues? We put to strict proof. So let's see how it goes. Okay. But let's not question like, why do you, how dare you run? Or why do you think you win? Why can't I win? I'm not saying do you know what the electorate will do? The past is only, and I'm making this even as an academic argument, mm -hmm. right? The past is only, is, is not an accurate prediction of the future. So you could have people decide that, Charlie. Papa Nyefi, Abonisu Nyefi, who votes? President in Safwa. No, Nasanda, stop being mischievous. <laughs> so the next person, so he picked up the form himself. himself. So he's young, um, speaks very well. Francis Adani Mo has shown MP for Mampong for eight years, a civil engineer, has very strong ideas about the built environment. And he was a student leader at KNUST. MPP knows who he is. Even though he's not in parliament. So if you say Adani, you know him. Now see this. This gentleman, had he not run for president, you would not remember who he was. That, that's true. Because he was a, a, a normal MP. He wasn't an exceptional MP. That's true. Now, you, you know him because he ran. Mm -hmm. So he, he had platform to express his ideas. Mm -hmm. So sometimes mm -hmm. these things are for people to know the quality of the people. Because, look, in Safar wasn't even on our screen. Yeah. Because we didn't know who he was. But he was on point blank two days ago. Yeah. And guess what? Somebody put him on an energy committee. Yeah. Because they know his mind. Mm -hmm. So he is one of the two engineers in the field. The engineering community obviously would say they have the men. You know him better than I do because you interviewed him more recently. Did you ask him whether he wasn't getting tired of this? Because he's becoming almost like a serial runner. And he's not improving. What I've noticed with uh, Francis Adanimo is that he's religious. I think his God speaks to him. And his God told him that, my son, go. Because oh, you are serious. I'm serious. He, he's very religious, and he started this from way back when he was in school. That's what he told me in the interview. And he's very confident, not just politically, but even religiously, he believes that he, he, he is going to make it, and he's going to make So like it. Ghana, God has a nation ahead. Thank you very much at all. <laughs> so so he, his, his confidence for me comes from I don't know where, because he has run. This will be the third or yeah, second time he's yeah, running. Third time. And he did so well the last time. Uh, the party went to the primaries. So perhaps he's confident. Now, don't forget, he was not given any appointment in the yeah. six to seven years of the NPP administration, even though he was involved in the party's activities. I asked him, if Akufado gives you a job now, would you take it? And he was on face-to-face. -face. Uh, he said, well, he didn't mind taking a job, but now he's got another job, so he's busy. He wants to take a bigger job. But you get a sense that this is someone who, if he's offered a job in this government, he would be happy to take it. And I don't know why he still keeps pushing beyond the religious aspect that I... <laughs> so I you're see. saying that after the interview, the only thing you got was that he, his God says you will win. Yeah, I think, I think he has some belief, <laughs> in the inner belief that he should run and then... I see. Win. 
<laughs> Francis and the, Yeah, and the engineering part, well, he's not the only engineer in the race. Yeah, so you are, you are a bit baffled by his persistence in the yeah, race. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, he comes and he's very calm and collected. Yeah, and very, he, very. And yeah. he has, he, he knows what he wants to say. So he's sort of, he's spoken since what, 24 he's very, he's, he's, He speaks well. So he knows what he wants to say and he's been a member of parliament, even though he lost his own backyard. Yeah. I said to him, you lost MP ship and you want to be elected as president. He said that races are different. And the race is not for the swift. So I Neither is the battle for the strong. Thank you so the much. battle is certainly the Lord. <laughs> the battle is the Lord. So that's so France that's... Adainimo. Um, so there are 10. So we've done Kojo in Safwa and Adainimo. Yes. Do we know where Kojo in Safwa Poku is from? Where he's from? Yes. He's from Kumase. In fact, he mentioned the town for me. So he's in the heart of so Kumase. So you notice what I said previously. Ashanti region. Ashanti region. Ashanti region. I have interviewed him. Okay. Before I go to Kwame Nijipong, yeah. Nsafwa is from Kumase, and he speaks only three in addition to English language. And he was unapologetic about it when All I right. said to him yeah. that if you go around to campaign, you need to speak to the people. He said, I will hire a translator. He's young. <laughs> Allow him to experiment with technology. Bernard, the guy said to me yes. that if you go, I said, for instance, if you go to Jojefeni, you want to speak ever with the people. Or if you go to Bimbila, you want to speak, yeah. you know, Nanum or, yeah. or Konkomba to the people. He said, no, yeah. he doesn't need that. He said to me yeah. that one of the most successful members of the New Patriotic Party is the late Jake Otanka Obeche Bilamte. And he spoke only English. Yo. And he asked me if I know that. And I said, yeah, I knew Sky, that. Sandra, let's move on. <laughs> so, speaking of language, I think he speaks a few. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure where to place him in terms of whether he make it for the top five. And we don't want to guess. The, the challenge we have is that the delegates list for the so-called super delegates, we don't have all the details. And in fact, the polling we'll be doing will be more reflective of the final voting constituency. Do you get my point? The bigger, the bigger so the, it's, it's, it's not, we don't have accurate information as to who these guys will be voting for the first round but we feel that they would still reflect the will of the overall group so there's going to be a poll we're releasing soon general secretary for a year is travels press secretary to president kufour five years we know him reinvented himself went into the engineering field has done sports commentary has a personal story the father was killed among the three judges in the early 80s quite articulate loves football so it takes a lot of the boxes in terms of football. Also from the Ashanti region, by the way. He can say he's youthful in Ghana. You know, Ghana, the youthfulness yeah, is, the a, age, yeah. youthfulness mm. is a different matter. <laughs> so because if you compare him to some boy, he's youthful. Mm. But I mean, he's not mm. a small boy. Mm -hmm. So, look, I, I think if he makes the top five, he's done well. Because I, don't, I see his billboards. I, I see that he has, a, he has a clear message. But I don't see... The resources, I, I don't, I don't see there is like for example, the other candidates are people speaking for them. They are organizing marches. He's using a different approach, okay. But somebody who's been a general secretary of a party should not be underestimated. For some reason, so he should not. So, so that's so, actually what I was going to say that because yeah. he needs NPP votes, and NPP has voted for him to before. be a general secretary yeah. of the party before the issues came up and he had to go. And when he left as general secretary. He wasn't the type who went off and started attacking. He wasn't pissing out. Yeah, yes. So I remember a number yes. of times I've yes. contacted him. Yes. Do you want to speak yes. about the issues? He yes. said, no, no, I want to be silent. Yeah. And he was silent up until 2020 yeah. when he was called to join the Akufado campaign. He's managed himself really well. And, he, yeah. and so there are two of them who left the party, he and his chairman at Paul the time. Paul Afoko is not back, back. Yeah, he know. is back. Yeah. He was on the campaign trail in 2020. Yeah. He was with Nana Dan Akufado on the campaign trail doing his business campaigning. So he has bid his time and he's back. Yeah. And if the NPP delegates who voted for him as general secretary are, are still there, they may well say, well, this guy is repentant, he's, he's careful, he's, he's really true and true NPP. He's not a sellout as he was accused of being. I foresee him doing so well if the same delegates... Well, is, I, I think what we need to do is look at the mood of the party. So NDC, the mood of the party was that we want Mahama. Simple. So it wasn't even a question of how good is Dufour or how good is whoever. Mm -hmm. We just won Mahama. Simple. So I think the key to this election is about the mood of MPP. 
Do you understand? And the mood, so it's not a question of who's quality. It's a mood of who do we want, who we think can help us break the eight. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think, I am saying that if he makes the top five, he's done well. I That's what I was saying. I, I remember him from election 208. He was in the strong room. For the MPP. Yeah. Big, big, big deal. Anyway, let's so go. So that's Kwame J. Japan. And notice the AJ. Uh, so again, in the media prior to the, at least in the past 10 years, it's Kwame Japan. But being a clever marketer and realizing that it's another AJ in the race, make sure the AJ is there. So we know he's the KAA because that's also the short form, hashtag mm -hmm. KAA. Mm -hmm. So all of these. I would say of all the candidates, he's done the most media interviews. Because that's his strength. He's articulate he's and he has relationships with the media. Yeah. So almost every week, if he's not in the field, he's in the media. Okay. We'll see how that helps. So that's Kobnai Jie Japong. This man, you've interviewed more than I have. Mm -hmm. So I need to ask you what his plan is. What is his, how is he feeling about the race? So I spoke to him as recently as yesterday. He, he, he said he was inviting us to come cover his okay. pickup of the phones. Okay. And he's doing that today himself. So he did it today? He's doing it today, and he's doing it in person. In person. Wonderful. So I asked him... Oh, so they came, but he didn't come in person. Okay, then, then they means that something has something, changed over there. Because changed. what he said to me that there's so many constituency chairmen who are calling, Ch uh, uh, Chairman, Honorable, we want to pick your forms for you. This person will call from West Timidge, another call from BA. Yeah. So he decided that he doesn't want to divide his own support base, so he will go himself to pick the forms. I don't know what happened over the last 24 hours, that he, because there's even a flyer he has done yeah. uh, where he's saying that uh, he's inviting people to come and pick up the forms uh, with him, and he's doing that himself. If you could just give me a second. Yeah, just but I, I just want to make a point to you as well. So mm -hmm. he is the... I always, I always saw him as one of the, the, the stars of the MPP in the Kufour era. Deputy Attorney General, full Attorney General, Deputy Speaker of Parliament. I, Jogate is solid. I, I feel his sort of stars dimmed a bit, but it's good to have somebody from the Western region in the race because he's probably, he and Baumia are the only non Asante is in the race. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good for him to be in the race. So, so he calls himself the People's President. Yeah. Joe Gatti, and he said he was speaking for this afternoon. In God we trust, that is his motto. The, the other point I wanted to make to you, I'll make that point in the next slide, because you know, we have 10 candidates or 10 aspirants, of which two are not Ashanti. Can you guess which secondary school has the most aspirants in the MPP? Um, well, I'm looking at a school from the central region. Which school is that? Fancy P? Yes. Seriously. So, Kwame Japon is in Fantipim. Jogate is in Fantipim. This guy, I don't know which school he went to, but mm -hmm. I, it wasn't in Fantipim, I would have known. He's also in Fantipim school. Interesting. Yeah. So that's just a, a side story. So maybe we'll call the Fantipim old boys to tell us who they're supporting. <laughs> because the Adisco old boys, they have two. So there are two Adisco boys. Do you know who they are? Who and who? Alan and Kennedy. I see. So, so the central region. So five, five of them, two Cape Coast schools. Baumia is Tamale Secondary. Yeah, Tamale School. Um, I don't know where Kofi Kunidu Apreku went. I'm sure they can find for me. I, I forget. That. I forget. Okay. And Kojo in Safapoku, I don't know. Adainimo, I know he went to Tech. I don't know what secondary school he went to. I think yep. he went to, I think Adainimo is Opokuwari. Okay. I'll, I'll confirm this. The so this is Jogati. The issue with Jogati, Bernard, yes. the last election in his own backyard, he did not do well. Struggled. Yeah, he struggled. In fact, many NDC people believe that they won that seat. And you know, that's just a belief, but at the end of the day, Electoral Commission... Let me ask you a question. A Does Jogate think his early declaration of intention harmed him in the government? Because he was made railway minister and then removed. There are other people who wanted to be president, they still had ministerial positions up until January. Is there a sense in which he's being targeted? Because some people even feel like Tekendi Takrade, which is, is MP for uh, Sikado Sikado Kitan, Kitan, which is Tekendi Takrade anyway. That area. It's always been good for MPP. Yeah. So there's a certain sense that those four he, 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 he there's the some group. sort of internal this I don't know whether he's courting some disaffection. Is it the same as a threat? I don't know. Does he pass off? Does he, does he, he say that to you? He, he, he comes across 
as forgiving and largely and caring about he not being nominated again as a minister. And he says to me his relationship with the president and Akufado goes way back. I mean, he took over from the man when the man went to run as, as, as flag bearer. Yeah. He became attorney, attorney general. general. Yeah, so, I, yeah. And he has done his work. For him, he's been a great lawyer. He has done his work. The eat loss case, for instance, yeah. when the president was recently awarding people who went there, he was one of the people who were giving the award. He thinks he has done his bit. My worry for him is if you have a struggle in a Chicago Ketan, yeah. are you really sure you can win the national election? And again, Bernard, hand on heart, if you ask me which were some of the ministries, ministries that were unnecessary in the first term of Akufado, I would say railway was unnecessary, sanitation was unnecessary, aviation was unnecessary. It's, it's, it's easy for I, you to say. I thought these ministries should have remained under the transport ministry. Yeah. Uh, but so well, two, two other happened. key points. So his track record in parliament is pretty good. Former deputy speaker is always good. And he's, he's respected at the bar. Yes, he is. So he's, if MPP is supposed to be a party of lawyers and businessmen, Probably apart from Alan. Alan is no, Alan is a lawyer economist, yeah. but Alan doesn't really flaunt his law. Yes, but this guy is a okay. proper lawyer. Let's go to the next a person. A proper lawyer. Um, so, Dr. Kofi Kudu Apriku. From Akumadan. Akumadan, mm. yes, of Finsun North. Mm. He was the MP. Look, for me, when, when MPP came to opposition in 96, if you were to mention the top 10 MPP voices, J.H. Mensah, Nanado Danko Kufado, Yao Osafo Mafo, and I'm talking about Parliament. Kwame Naba tells, right? Kufi Kunedu Apreku. You put him there. And then you add the former uh, finance minister, Banredu. Yeah. So you have J.H. Mensa, Nana Kufado. Of course, J.H. Kufo was the leader of the party, he mm -hmm. was opposition leader, but he wasn't in Parliament. Mm -hmm. Yao Osafo Mafo, I'm talking about Parliament now. Yeah. Kwame Naba tells, you will mention this man named in the top six. So in the finance portfolio, a lot of people were teaming for finance minister. When Kufo came to office, of course, J.H. Mensah was the most respected finance guy, Stanford Trade J.H. Mensah. He was the next guy, which is why he was giving trade. So typically, the, your chief finance guy will be finance minister. Your second best finance brain will be trade minister. But I think my personal view is that the attempt to take over from Kufo, the, tw the 17, the 17 campaign. I, I think the way that played out didn't really help, didn't him. help him. And I feel like he was, he, he, the, the, he was not, he didn't manage that transition well. And somehow his star has sort of dimmed. Mm -hmm. But in between 96 and 2004, if you talk of MPP leadership, mind, thought leaders, great story, this is the guy. So obviously things have moved. So he represents more the nostalgia of, for me, the early Kufo years. That's what he comes The with. early Kufo years. The Nepal days. Yes, the early Kufo years. Okay. So, again, depending on who is voting and what they want, I really don't even hear of him that much these yeah. days. Yeah. So, Kofi Konedo Apreku. Okay. There you have him. Trade Minister, Economist, by the way. MP for Finsun North. So we're also doing some calculations. So we have three engineers in the race. Or is it two engineers? It's two. Kwabne Jepong and um, um, Adainimo. Adainimo. And then you can say you have one and a half lawyers. Yes. Because you have uh, Jogate. Alan. Alan Cash. Economist, you can say Baumia is an economist. Kunedo Apreku. Apreku is an economist. Alan is a, also an economist. Yes. But Alan is a sort of yes. straddles the two. Okay. So we're just also doing those calculations. Right. So he's an economist. Okay. Um, who, who, who else do you have? This man. Where do you put him? Energy economy? Look, he's fun to talk to. He's a very intelligent man. Extra. He's a very intelligent man mm -hmm. who's also very knowledgeable about the country. So when you, when you talk to him, he, 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 you know, there are people who have the pulse of the nation. All right? So he's a, he's, he's a finance guy. He's a banker. Went to Fantafim school. Um, he, 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 I, I, I don't know the PDS thing and what happened as energy minister, but there's obviously something there. With the system. Yes. So he's had, there's something just not right with the chemistry between him and the, the current Akufuado people. From Somalia. That's his father. That's his mother. Yeah. But his father is Ashanti. But he sees, I think he, he does, he plays the Somalia, the Krobo card more. I don't know, but of course, Ashanti one. You know what I find interesting about him? 
He's mostly on Oman FM, which is a traditional <laughs> new patriotic party platform. Yes, Kennedy. Well, yes. he belongs to Kennedy Japan. Yes, he's always there. So I don't know. Maybe one person speaks will be one very person. good tree. Yeah, speaks Krobo very well as yeah. well. Speaks a lot of languages. Yeah, speaks English like yeah. off the tip of the tongue. And you know, I, I, for me, my only guess is, you know, if you have a, somebody working in Bank of America in New York as your energy minister, and energy, by the way, has become a finance function, and you have a finance minister who used to also work at Solomon Brothers in New York. So an investment banker versus an investment banker. And if you know anything about New York investment bankers, mm -hmm. they, they're always going to clash. That's how I feel. I don't know. This may be just conjecture. His vetting was one of the longest. Ghana yes, because of had. all the allegations around. About energy. Yeah, but okay. he, he's a solid guy. But I just feel like when you look at political parties in the government, they, I don't think they like voting for aggrieved people. Yeah, it looks comes across as yes, such. and it's that's the, the impression that's created. Even you can say you can say that even about this. A, a lot of the candidates seem like people who are not either they've not been part of the party and they feel aggrieved, and they've been out of touch. A bit. Yes, so if the party is looking to unite, and don't forget one of the reasons why Afuku and Kamene Japan won was the party felt like. Let's, let's show the leaders that we can unite. Yeah. Because at the time, they were seen to belong to different camps. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow, it did not work. Okay. So, That's in a debate, happened. in a debate among the ten, he, he, would, he would be in the top three. Actually, top one. No, I, I actually think if you had a debate, he and Kwabne Jepong, and possibly Jogate because of his advocacy skills. That would be a powerful one. Yes, if it was just like a pure debate. <laughs> but in terms of range, in terms of when you talk about range, you're talking about economics, yeah. chieftaincy, finance, law. He's there. Yeah, he's, he, he's, a, he's a quality guy. Let's yeah. look at our next person. So he's we have done four. We are, we, yeah. So this is the third Kabuche guy. Yes. This is the man. I, I, think, I think you jumped a bit. Oh, I did? Uh, okay. Oh, forgive me. Go one more step. Let's see. Just he go. went to Pokuwari school. I, just go one more Let me just be sure if you have not Okay, yes. good. So this is the former agric minister. Mm. I've already told you who he is. Dr. Osuifri Hakuto. Now, if anybody is claiming Ashanti support, he is. He can be the most. Because he has re Akoto to everything. His, name. his father, himself, his brother. Cambridge trained agronomist, a Greek economist. Um, Kwadaso. Much older. I think he's the second oldest or oldest in the field. In the race. The oldest in the field. Very clear in his mind what he wants to do. So you either love him or you hate him. There's and, no middle ground. It's almost like he doesn't care. What he wants to do is what he wants to do. He yes. said, I'm bringing a farm to the Ministry of Agric. And, and he, he did. brought it there. He did. <laughs> Whole markets. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what, what, what would affect him though is fertilizer. That campaign yeah. has been on. And I don't know how it's going to judge He says farmers will vote for him. Mm -hmm. he said but the mean? farmer groups, when you interview them, don't seem too happy with him. He said one million farmers. But he's basically saying there are more farmers than farmer groups. So if the farmer groups don't like him, the farmers, the farmers like will him. Vote for him. Okay. I, I, I think... Planting for food and jobs. He, he, he is... The other thing I need to say is I've seen a lot of his, bill, his posters. And that's why the NDC said he has more posters than, than farms. <laughs> they said he has planted more posters yeah, I've seen a lot than, of his than posters. food and jobs. No, but I'm using that to say that he probably has a lot of resources. Because his posters are all over. Bernard, he was in the UK for, for like forever before he decided to come down to... Yeah, Canada. I mean, I don't know if you can listen. Yeah. To, if there's a Let, okay, let's hear him. Because let's he was see. even here not too long ago. Let's hear him. Yeah. And I can assure you, I won't let you down. All right. I won't let you down. We are going to campaign around the country to sell our message for the resuscitation of the MPP as a party. The morale is down, and we are going to raise the morale to face the NDC come next year, 2024. I have never sponsored any poll. Yes. Find out who is sponsoring those polls. If I sponsor a poll, I bet you they will say that I'm first. But I won't because it's self city. It's self, it's, it doesn't serve any purpose. We know what you are doing on the ground. So all the polls in the world can say whatever they want. But we are talking about the 900 people. Behaving like Donald Trump, he doesn't care. The polls are not true. Fake news, he says. <laughs> Dr. Uzi Friyakutu, he doesn't believe it. He no. says he's not sponsoring one and he doesn't believe in it. Yeah, Next so it, it, will be, it will be interesting to see what he does. This guy should not be taken for granted The at disruptor all. general. Yeah, he has media support. No, he has media backing. Mm -hmm. 
he, he is campaigning aggressively. I actually, in fact, I, I need to retract when I talk about the debate. If there was a debate among Ghanaians for ordinary people to listen to, if there was a debate like in a normal marketplace, he would win. Well, he, he would win because he is he is populist. He knows how to strike the right chords. This guy can speak, and marketing will be crying, right? So he's not. In a, if we had a debate in this studio with like big economic discussion, then you have those guys. But if you talk about on the ground, he's formidable, extremely formidable, and. We've already said what we've said about him. He's doing yeah. well in the polls. Yeah. He's strong third in the polls, much higher than the rest. Mm -hmm. He would definitely be in the top five. He'll push the election to a runoff. And yeah, and we don't even know his end game. Mm. Some people, you know, he in fact it looked like he was even provoked to run. Yeah. It's like, ah, you, you are supporting somebody. Say, ah, me president. You know, it's like somebody provoked him and he started it's running. Critical. But his billboards are all over, his pickups are doing, you can see he's campaigning, he's very serious. So that's Kennedy Ohini Ejepong. MP for Asin Central. I say he's Ashanti not because he's Ashanti, but because he has roots there. He grew yeah. up there as well. Okay. He's from Asin Domping, by the way. Okay. Went to the U.S. very early and has a lot of support among certain ordinary people. Then you have the trade minister. He's been trade minister all his life. <laughs> I know, right? He's done it for Kufo, done it for Akufado. I mean, he's the longest serving trade minister in and the And yesterday country. when I interviewed Sly Tete, former, well, current MP for... Um, Botiano yeah. Manfro, who is a key member. Yeah. So there are some members of parliament who are openly supporting him. Yeah. The OPK, MP yes. from Praeso, is yes. one of them. Slighted is one of them. And yesterday when he joined me in the studio, he was very passionate. And he said, say the deputy trade, uh, deputy, uh, deputy finance minister. I mean, I was, uh, uh, sorry. She hasn't come to say, but she was at the match. She was at the match. So she's guilty by association. <laughs> so he, I mean, Sly yesterday was, Sly was very confident. He knew what they wanted and he thought that it's Alan's time. And he does a lot of analysis and says that the part that Alan played in the economy is a critical part. And so if the track record issue has been talked about, yeah. he is going to I want to ask a question about Sly, though. I, I get the sense the campaign is degenerating a bit because I had, I saw a news report where, for example, they were talking about Baumier's father and Sly says, let's not go there. I mean, has it gotten to the he, point of... Yesterday, he gave me the impression. He said, listen, they are not going to attack anybody. They are here to talk about their candidate, and that is what they will do. He said, when I go to hardcore MPP members, I'll tell them why they should not vote for Baumia and they should vote for Alan. But you, as a radio station, I'm not going to say it, because to be a sound by that could lead to disunity issues. Wow. So, Alan, and, and we are told that the campaign is going to start properly. He had market women go pick his forms for him yesterday. And they came to say, Nana, we told you, say, we'll go and campaign for you. We, it's your time. A draw, so collect your forms and run. His visibility is quite serious. The issue, though, is that this guy hasn't even properly stepped into the race. Has he even done a formal declaration? Yeah, which is what is making it serious, because the vice president has not actually even declared officially. He hasn't held an event yet. Mm -hmm. All these guys have stolen starts on him. Yeah. And yet, he's the big elephant in the room. Yeah. Yeah. So... We, we are saying that he's a front runner yeah. based on the history of the party and based on the fact that he is not the same type of vice president that Ali Muhammad was. Mm -hmm. So we'll spend more time talking about him next week and the other candidates as well. But as soon as the week passes and he declares officially and he makes his first statement and the campaign really starts, then we will see where everybody else stands. So he has not declared, but Fred Owari has led a team of supporters to go pick forms for him. Obviously. What happened was that the day the forms were, or the nomination were open, a number of groups went to the NDPP headquarters and said, we are here to collect forms for Baumia. They were falling over themselves. Plenty. Collect your 50,000 check. Give us the forms. Collect your... So, and then the office of Baumia said to the party, I haven't sent my people yet. So the party <laughs> says to the people that, Listen, um, the people said they would come and pick it themselves. It was yeah. yesterday that they went to so pick the, it the, themselves. So the, the main point here is that there's a strong feeling that the party establishment wants him to win, mm -hmm. which is the whole issue, yeah. which we can delve into mm -hmm. later on. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that's uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Mahmoud Wale Wale Adam Smith. Nanado says Mamadu. Mamadu, you know. Ma the Wale Wale Adam Smith. Adam Smith. Amazing. The economy is struggling. It will struggle him small, but... Wish you all the best, sir. Let's <laughs> leave it now here. Uh, that would be city newsroom. No city newsroom. Well, all situation. situation room uh, is connected. These are, these are cousins to the city newsroom. So, situation room on city TV. My name is Umar Sanda Amadou. I did this with Bernard Avle. Thank you for watching. We'll be with you next time. Bye bye.